welcome to CQ Gaming and today we are going to be reviewing the Iron Hans Corlex. Yay! Give me strength. Any guess? Guys and girls, thanks so much uh, for watching our video so far. Let's um, realize we've got matching t shirts on. I know. Like the Bash Brothers, don't we? <laughs> I think that definitely it. washes me out. <laughs> we hope you're enjoying the content. We thought we'd take a, a bit of a different spin on this tonight. And it's something that we hope to uh, introduce as a, as a video of content in our playlists for you guys to devour and uh, delect over. Just want something else. You might have bigger arms than me. Stop touching us off. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> so today we are reviewing yes. Iron Hands. Yes, it's a month old. Get over it. We've got very busy schedules <laughs> and children. Yeah, and you may have noticed I've had a haircut. And big it's been that long ago. Yeah. Yes. Unpresentable. Any case, enough of the waffle. Iron Hands. So Steve's going to lead us through this because Steve is a space marine player and I know nothing about space marines. So right. Steve, take it away. Okay, so these guys, new codex supplement. Uh, these guys, you know, as we mentioned, it's a month old. Uh, already, look at the meta in the tournament. They seem to be doing particularly well in the meta of the tournament. They are very, what well, I would say, uh, heavy weapon orientated and I like the vehicles. Yeah. They're going to be very meta-defining. Yeah. Um, just to give you guys a quick overview, we're going to flick through the codex and uh, highlight what we think is the, the key points, the USPs, as you call it in the business world. Now, we know Steve's not a very good reader, so when I take over, it's just out of pure frustration. Yes, okay. Just just bear with us. I want you to just learn my spellings. So. Um, so the Iron Hands, obviously... Their uh, their main man, shall we say, is uh, Ferris Mans. Yeah, right here. There we go. Reincarnated. I don't want to spoil it for you. He's dead. Why isn't he painted? Because I own him, and 90% of everything I own is not painted. <laughs> so as you may, may notice, we've also quite handily made some notes in this as we go along, so we can make it nice and break, brief. Break, break the spine for the camera. That's fine. Oh, was a new book. Was a new book. Um, so yeah, Ferris Manus. Uh, for those who ain't aware of Ferris Manus. Oh, do tell us a little bit about Ferris Manus there, Steve. Well, he was uh, he was the Primarch. Who's Primarch, Steve? Uh, he was the Iron Hands Primarch, and he was also killed on his front five by Fulgrim. Spoiler alert. There you go. Uh, and that's... Why is that important, Steve? Well, now you put us on the spot. Um, Basically, it sets up the whole rivalry between them and the Emperor's children moving forward in the law uh, in the 40k universe. And uh, it really, there's a couple of stratums in here as well that, that filter into that as it moves forward. Why do you think it's alive? <laughs> do you know where Ferris Manus got his hammer from? No, do tell. The Phoenician made it from. Is this the Gorgon and the Phoenician by any chance? Oh, oh. There you go, you see. And I believe that he made Fulgrim a sword in return. I might be wrong with it, I can't remember. It was, I think I've read something though, was that the, the test of weapon skills? And they were trying to outdo each other. Oh, they're brothers, they never did that. No. Very friendly. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah, any guess? Iron Hands, Ferris Manus. Uh, they have a, a kink for mechanical adaptations. Uh, flesh is weak, so they call it. Uh, so there's a limb. They like to chop it off and replace it with something bionic, whether that be an eye, a nose. Um, I think uh, that's why they can fire two ball guns. They've got mechanical in the means. Yeah. Um, and they, uh, they heed from the home world of Medusa. Uh, that is their home world. And uh, they are pretty much run by a, uh, a tight uh, regime at the top of the rung of the ladder. Who is the Iron Father and the Iron Council? They're the guys who who dish out the orders. Mammy um, and Daddy. Mammy and Do as you're told, as they say. Um, you're adherent to the government's Adeptus Status Codex. And uh, they also have 
a bit of a penchant for ties with the Deptus Mechanicus as well. Okay. And penchant, the uh, a bit of a thing for the Omnissire as well. So these guys, looking at the law and tying the law together from what we can see in the in the rules in the book, they are what well, I believe, and some might argue this. I think they're the new, possibly the new gunline castling marine. Of course, they are. Of course, yeah. We'll get into that when we go through the rules. Yeah. But it's a very bold statement to start it off. Uh, let's get into it. Let's live big. Let's live big. Um, so yeah. So there are some beautiful, beautiful pictures. A bit of filler. So I think how many pages in this book? Is it sixty odd? So there's sixty four pages. And I think all you need is about five of them. Yes. Yes. So uh, some if if you like law, it's definitely worth picking it up. Yeah. Uh, if you're not bothered about the law, if you don't really give a hoot and you just want to play them, um, maybe four or five pages, basically. But as you can see, I'll tell you what happened here. I'll tell you what happened here. So, everything I've done, I've done in pink. And yet, underneath this, it just says, dickhead. <laughs> so, that was, a, that was a loving message from my wife. She's not a big fan. No, she's not really. Never mind. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, some of the uh, as you look through so some of the buff that's in there, I really like the the, the colour schemes. The black, it's very. Uh, you like the you like the colour black. Uh, yeah, it's black fantastic. isn't the colour. Black's a lack of colour. Oh, there we go, Mr. Technicalities. Yet again. Well, I like the way they are painted. Should we say? Let's talk about <laughs> um, the only character you get in the book is Iron Father Ferros. It um, sounds a little bit too much like Ferris Manus, doesn't it? Just the slightest bit, slightest bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a one thing. It's a, it's a good codex, but what you're paying your money for for one character? Uh, there is we could put a couple of more in there, please, kids. Chop it would be nice. Yeah. Maybe it's even, I don't know, these guys, as you will speak about it, they seem to like the Dreadnought as well and have the ability to make uh, their Dreadnoughts the Euro Commander. Maybe it's a specialist commander in that respect, might have been something nice, I think. A silly rule for all tech marine, just, I mean, hmm. just uh, a standardised model for them or something like that. The, this book offers so many little buffs that make Iron Hands, in my opinion, probably is a little bit overpowered, but... As we go through, um, you get the gist of what we're speaking about. So let's talk about uh, Iron Father Ferris. Give me the stat lines. Steve. Well, he's a he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a dude. He's got some some good buffs that are on there. Uh, obviously, uh, he comes out with seven wounds there. He's got a nice toughness of five. But uh, when you look at his abilities, we've got some some key abilities of there that really do give a an aura buff effect. So one of them is the Signum Array. Which is a uh, any friendly uh, unit within three inches uh, receives a weapon skill of uh, two plus. Yeah, so it's a blister skill of two plus, and the the important part about that is it's any iron hands unit. So it can be a big squad of ten, or it can be a tank. Yeah, which is quite quite a handy handy thing to do. Certainly when these guys are sat at the back of the table, your two pluses are hitting on the range weapons there. Um, Yes, okay, that's great. This guy, though, does not have rerolls one. Mm. The other it's... argument to that is, does he need them if in the Devastator Doctrine, we're jumping ahead of it, uh, you get to reroll all ones? Yeah. Like heavy weapons. Mm. It's true, it's very much true. But then again, that also means that it leans very heavily towards heavy weapons. You can't just stick him next to a squad of 10 Marines and him to every roll once. He's got to use his ability on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a ten where these guys are, though, which is stunning. Which is nice. Right? It's nice because you don't ever want to be the same. No. You want flavour. And this is actually, that's, this, this is what this book does very well. It gives a lot of flavour. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the, you look at some of the buffs that, that come up. I mean, yet again, we're talking specifically here about Iron Father Ferrius. Um, you know, he's got no artificial bionics there. He's got, he's got a five. Five plus uh, feel no pain, rights of temperance, so uh, friendlies in six inches get a five plus invulnerable as well. And um, he's also got a couple of quick, uh, quick vehicle fix that 
repair kits going on. He's got obviously his punch and repair kit that's uh, uh, blessing the almond sire coupled with master of the uh, forge. You can virtually you can get out uh, you know a flat three lost rooms on a vehicle friendly vehicle within the uh, aura vicinity, uh, per turn, which is which is fairly handy. So these guys you know they're going to sit at the back. They're going to sit at the back. The heavy weapons are going to sit at the back with the tanks, with the big guns in vehicles, and they're going to blow stuff up from the other side of the field. Your task is to get to them, basically. Um, I don't think he's bad for 110 points either. I think he's exceedingly flavoursome for 110 points. I would pick him up if I was playing Iron Hands. Yeah, yeah. He's a... Uh... You bear that in mind. You, a Tech Marine, I think, in Space Marine. So you need, so we should mention, you do need the Space Marine Codex to play Iron Hands. Full stop. You need, this, this is a supplement to that book. Mm -hmm. And in the Space Marine book, a uh, tech marine is 50 points so you can compare compare this guy to tech marines and he would just there you go yeah <laughs> so one of the things he's got which is pretty cool is the gorgon's wrath so it's basically a heavy bolter on his shoulder chilling so 36 inch range heavy three it is strength five minus two ap two of the damages Wow, wow, we wow. Right, so wow, wow, we wow. That might not be very good on turn three and four when he's moving around and he's getting minus one hit because it's a heavy weapon. But on turn one, he is hitting on twos, rerolling ones with an AP of minus three. From a heavy ball turn, it's two damage. Uh, pick your face up, totally. Well, I'll tell you what that is. That's um, a primary star. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably why they've been doing really well in, in, the, in the tournament. Yeah. 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 A lot of space marines yeah, out there. That's nice, yeah. it's really nice. He's obviously got a servo arm, he gets one attack with that. Normally we deal with a servo arm times two strength. Minus two AP, three damage, and just minus one to hit. And he's got someone, something called Harrow Hand. I guess that's his axe. Must be, it's gotta be. Plus three strength, minus two AP, two damage. Just nice. Just nice, nice. Well, and then one thing I will give on this is, yes, okay, it's limited on models. Uh, that is a very tasty model. If you get a chance, go on and have a quick Google online. That is a really nice model. I think I'll just use this guy forever. <laughs> um, you know, he's even got the cool little uh, droopy moustache there that you see on many old men who were stood in the pub on Sunday evening. Are we going to do a Movember? No, don't have to. Right, moving so on. So 110 points, you're yep. happy with them? Yep. So what, the last thing we're going to mention is, um, what's his warlock trade again? Student of History. I like this warlord. It's not like I've just read that from the pink slip on the boat, is it? Yeah, I like this warlord trait. This is one of those ones that'll catch a lot of people out. So he goes into combat or he retaliates to combat because he's been charged if he's in the back of your lines. And the warlord trait is after combat, in the consolidation phase, he can move six inches. It doesn't have to be towards the close enemy, which is really, really handy. It's one of those things that will either get him out of trouble or get him right back in the fray. Mm. I like it. I yeah. really like it because he's not 110 points. He's not Gilliman. He's not minus Calgar. He'd get smashed off both of those people. But both those people are three and four times as uh, expensive as him, um, relatively speaking, in points value. Mm. Um, he does what he does. He's decent in combat and he fixes tanks. Yeah. He's got a decent weapon on his shoulder. It's not overpowered. It's not a last cannon. He'll pick off a few Primaris Marines here and there and all over with a range of 36 inches. He's uh. just a solid pick. And he can run away from you up to six inches after he's smashed you in combat. If he survives. Well, he's got <laughs> toughness five, seven wounds. He's got a two plus save and a five plus a vulnerable. I mean, I think that's designed. I mean, when I've read through this codex, I think that's designed. I think the one way, possibly, I might prove them wrong, and you know, anyone's got experience out there playing Iron Hand so far, please comment and let us know what your thoughts are. Because as far as I can read into this, uh, these guys will sit at the back, they will blow you to smithereens, they'll blow in a knight to smithereens in, in sharp time. If you get into their back line, I think that is possibly their weakness. They're still marines? Mm. Yeah, they're still marines. The primary, still I think they have still. sustainability. Yeah, I think they'd be pretty tough when you get the back line because they have that sustainability. Um, with the actual wounds with the primaris, etc. Yeah, well, it's just that they've got a 5 plus invulnerable save if they're within 6 inches of the model. Yeah. There's other stratagems you can play that give them um, feel no pains. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's why they're very competitive. But we'll go into that with. Lovely 
pictures. We won't go in that with lovely pictures. Sons of the Gorgon. Steve! Yes! So we picked out a few. What does. Calculated to, 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 to fury. fury. Yeah, we picked out a few of the uh, um, the abilities that these guys can get when battle forged. And obviously, uh, the one that they've got is Calculated Fury. Reads as simple as this whilst in Devastated Doctrine is active. Models with this ability do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. So that's good. In, in addition, whilst the Devastator Doctrine is active, when resolving a tap made with a heavy weapon by a model with this ability, re-roll a hit of one. That's so, a big thing. So that captain really doesn't need the one then, therefore. Yeah, uh, that first turn shooting is going to be lethal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you move into... Do decide to move into Tactical Doctrine, then you, you're not really picking them out but yeah, but... Choices, no, choices, choices, isn't it? choices, choices. It depends how you build your army. Yeah, I think that's strong. That's very, very strong. Um, you know, you form a gun line at the back. You, you make sure there's open space in the table between you and your, your army you're playing against. All the facts you gain, and literally just open up and re rolls and re rolls and AP minus ones and re rolls. And you know what? We might see a resurgence of um, devastator squads. Hmm? Just devastator squads. The the biggest weakness was maneuverability. You stuck him in a bunker. You stuck him behind a wall, and you were like, "Right, let's see what I can shoot." And then someone just went, "Well, I'm going to go a little bit out your line of sight, and you have to move them. If you move them, they're out of cover. They're out of cover. It's minus one to hit. At least with this, you have that option of moving forward and not getting the minus one, and re-rolling once. I think that's big. I think that's big. Technically so, as well on the field when you start start to move heavy weapons around. And not suffering any penalties, so I think that's uh, dreadnoughts. Yeah, dreadnoughts with a heavy weapon. Everyone has avoided dreadnoughts with heavy weapons because all of a sudden you're hitting on fours because you want to walk forward. It's crazy, or you'd have to stick two heavy weapons on it and it doesn't move at all all game. Well, I mean, we've mentioned earlier that you know there's a stratagem or an ability where you can make a dreadnought like I think is your commander. Uh, literally, you're probably gonna see, you? yeah, you can see, um, you're gonna see like. I know this was a thing a bit ago, you know, resurgent of dreadnought squadrons and stuff like that. Just Marching yeah. around the field, blowing things up. They got a nice big buff last year. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic to see. If anyone's got any experiences with that, then they'll be interested in here. Yeah, as well. don't, don't bring them here. No, it's not interested. <laughs> no, we'll start crying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's not a lot else interesting there, is there? There's a few of the bits and bobs. That's uh, just, just uh, generally just, just talking through the the main ability, which is calculated fury. I mean, the meat of it starts coming. That's the, that's the codex, isn't it? Calculate mm -hmm. Fury, that's mm -hmm. the Codex. Mm -hmm. The rest is just kind of buffing onto that. That's correct, yeah. Some big wig at HQ decided that was the rule for them, and then they made a book around it. Fantastic. So, we're not going to bore you with Warlord traits. There's a couple of good ones in here. Um, you can get them online all the time. Uh, the couple that we we're going to mention dead quick is Student History we've mentioned. Student History is the six inch move one, which I like. And the other one is Target Protocols. I also like this, so I'll read this out. Tell me why I like it. I'll, I'll tell you after I've read it. <laughs> At the start of your shooting phase, select one friendly Iron Hands unit within six inches of this Warlord. Once that phase, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model, roll once... I know. Oh, well, with a ranged weapon by a model from that unit, you can re-roll the hit roll, that's better, once that phase, then resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model from that unit, you can re-roll the wound roll. And blah blah blah, blah and you can do the same for the damage roll. So you're re-rolling your hit, you're re-rolling your wound, and you're re-rolling your damage. That's a, that's a kill shot, isn't it? It's naughty. That is a kill shot. Can you imagine that on a heavy weapon team right next to a Devastator squad or a Dreadnought armed with something big and nasty or last cannons or something like that? That with a Predator. Predators could be good again. Bring them back. Yeah, yeah. That's and, it. oh, other good one is Ad Adept of the Omnishar. Om 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 Omnisire, sorry, you want to read that out for me? Yeah, certainly. Right At the, the end of your movement phase, this warlord can repair one friendly Iron Hands vehicle model within one inch of them. That model regains one lost wound. Each model can only be repaired once per turn. If this warlord is a tech marine, each time they use their Blessing of the Omnisire ability, the model they are repairing regains D3 plus 1 lost wounds instead of D3. Wow, we like that. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tasty. Tech Marines, normally, Tech Marines stand aside. 
we know what we're doing, iron hands, we like fixing things. In yeah, it's ourselves. nice, it's nice. Yeah, it's very, very good, very good. Uh, so relics. Any relics that stood out for you? Yeah, uh, there's a couple. Uh, relics of Medusa. Um, we've got the uh, Tempered Helm. Whilst a model from your army... Oh, tempered Helm. Tempered Helm. helm. Uh, whilst a mod model from your army with this relic is on the battlefield, you can re-roll 1d6 for each command point you spend to use a stratagem or 5 plus, get away from it, basically. Okay. It's quite it's quite handy because we know what farming's like and stuff like you that. You like your farming, don't you? Yeah. Well, well, I think that's going to certainly be some of the stratagems that you see in this as well. That's really going to come in handy when you're sat in that battlefield and you just pop, 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 pick up that. They won't have a lot of command points to play with, I don't believe I hand. No, so that's probably a really a big, big kick. Um, and the Gorgon's Chain was another one that I picked out. Um, a model with this relic has a 4 plus in front of save. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against that model, subtract 1 from the rune draw. Oh. It's handy. It's really saying, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot from long range. You like that? Yeah. yeah. I think it makes... So you put that on a character though, right? Mm-hmm. You put it on a character who's not going to get shot at because you're all going to have something in front of the character. Hmm. But that would be very good against them snipers that we played against the other day. What were they called? Oh, the Eliminators. Filth. Oh, yeah. That yeah. minus one to room roll would be nice. So, uh, you put on the Eliminators. But you won't get invulnerable save. Mm. Mm. Swings and roundabouts. Well, I, like, I, like, I like that person myself. Uh, and what did you pick out from these I special picked, shoes? Yeah, I only picked out... I, I wasn't overly fussed with the relics. The, the, the flavoursome, the nice, but... The, they're there. Mm. But special issue war Special issue war, war gear. I liked or something called Auto Medicare Bionics. So, if a model with this relic has lost any wounds at the start of your turn, it regains up to D3 lost wounds. It's it's just nothing to sniff at. Yeah, I like that. You stick that on a character that has five, six wounds. Um, it's very hard to kill characters in one round of combat unless they're against another combat beast. Um, I like that. I just like it. I, I think you picked out the, the the hair wire bolts as well. From previous experience, you said the hair wire bolts in previous editions were no the hair wire grenades from. Oh, all sorry, the... hair wire grenades. There you go. Yeah, me bolts and me grenades mixed up there. But uh, yeah, the hair wire bolts are okay. I'll read it out. When you give a model this relic, select one bolt weapon that model is equipped with. When when the bearer shoots with that weapon, you can choose for it to fire a hair wire bolt. If you do, you can only make one attack with that weapon, but when resolving that attack, if it is made against a vehicle unit and a modified roll of 4-5 inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any other damage, and an unmodified wound roll of 6 inflicts 3 mortal wounds on the target. So no, I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's a great throwback to the Hairwire Grenades of old that we used to have. Which was something along the lines of you roll, you throw the grenade, and a one nothing happens, and a two to five. I think you did one damage roll because back then you had damage rolls for tanks and stuff like that. And then on a six, I think it was just auto dead or something like that. It was crazy. The other one that I picked up on uh, for a fun value, um, and uh, we picked up is the Teeth of Mars, which is a, a yeah, special issue war gear that you can put on to. Uh, uh, arm model arm with a chainsaw. It's exactly the same as the Teeth of Terror. And I just thought, yeah, well, you could see where they're leaning with the, the well, other no, side. Is that the same? And, and, nah. One's from Earth, one's from Mars. Just a stone throws in the solar system. That exactly. Day. But so, yeah, I thought yeah. it was fun. Fun take. It's a normal everyday chainsaw apart from its minus two AP2 damage, which is nice. Um, when the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack with this weapon. Than a chainsaw, but it's also got something pretty awesome. When resolving an attack made with this weapon against a vehicle unit, this weapon has a strength characteristic of times two for that attack. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's chopping wheels off stuff, isn't it? You know what that is? That's a free power fist when you need it most. <laughs> Without the minus one hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you get an extra uh, extra attack yeah. off it as well. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, I like the flavour on that. Teeth of Mars. So, um, Powering these guys, there's, there's a few stratagems. Yeah. There, to be honest, there were some that were, and there were some that were like, and there were some that were like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
There's only one strategy my like. Go on then. And it's because it's fluffy as out. Vengeance for Isfan 5. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Basically if you're against word bearers, iron hands, oh sorry, iron warriors, night lords, or alpha legion, you're gonna kick their ass. But you'll never be against them people. The big one for me, I'll the pick of the structures is, and I've mentioned it previously, is uh, for one command point, March of the Ancients. Use this stratagem before the battle, after nominating a model to be your warlord, select one Iron Hands Dreadnought model from your army. That model gains the character keyword and add one to the attacks and leadership's characteristics of that model. So, that for me, you can start buffing with specific characters. Would you ever element. make your character a Dreadnought though? Yes. But it'll just get picked off. Yes. It's only as tough as a normal Dreadnought, but it's fun. If you had a full Dreadnought army, it'd be awesome, otherwise I wouldn't recommend it. Don't yeah, but that's what I'm saying, when you start maybe just getting unit squadrons of Dreadnoughts, you know, you know, it's not just about the rules, it's about a bit of fun as well. And look at me, I've got a character with Dreadnought, but he's just been wiped off the table. But it was fun doing. This isn't a fun army. This is a competitive army. I don't think you can make many fun armies with this, and then your friends will give you a pat on the back and invite you back next week. You either go hard or you go home with this army, in my opinion. So when are you get that then? Because you... Well, I've got the, the primer. I, I already <laughs> got the one. Um, <laughs> yeah, you just can't. Like, you, you can't put anything fluffy in this, and it will work. You can't put a squad of assault marines in, and then expect them to be okay, because they'll just get wiped off the board and do nothing. Um, there's... What's your opinion on that, Stephen? Well... I don't know. I, I, I just like the flavour. I like the whole flavour. I know why you're saying that it can be potentially it's quite a nasty thing if you set it up, go 1750, go a whole hog tournament list, um, get people throwing the hands in the box, take them home. I understand that as well, but I think there's a, there's a lot of flavour here as well. You can, you can play a fun, definitely. There's a, there's a lot of quirky little bits that you can have a fun well, game with. You let me know the next time we're having fun in a game, okay? I always have fun in the I'll game. record it. I always have fun in the game. For prosperity. <laughs> um, mercy. Any of the ones that stick out for Mercy, yeah, just about to say, mercy is weakness. Uh, use the stratagem in your shooting phase or the fight phase when an iron hand unit from your army is chosen to shoot with or fight with. Select one enemy unit until the end of that phase. Every attack made by a model in that iron, iron hand unit from your army that can target select the unit must do so. But when resolving such an attack, and an unmodified wound wall of six wounds the target twice instead of once. And that's one CP? Mm hmm. One CP. Okay. That's, um, that's, you just picked on one of my units, and uh, I'm going to get you back terribly, isn't it? Mm. What about yourself? No, I wasn't that bothered by them. No? No, they're, they're good. They're good. They're, they're... I find, like, I found that all of them are very situational. And there, there wasn't one, which is, oh, actually this is very awesome, there isn't one standout one that everyone will go to. Hmm. I suppose they've got to, they've got to give a spread better and flavour though. Which is awesome. I much prefer that. To take a flavour of the yeah. many, many turns that happens and occurs in a battle. Which is good, really. So you've got a, a bit of something to please everyone yeah. there on that. Any other ones for you? No, no that, that was mainly the pick. There was a couple of that's uh, uh, optimal oh, repulsion doctrines. There was one. So there was one for me. And it's, I believe it's Machine Empathy. After an Iron Hands Tech Marine model from your army has used their Blessing of the Omnishar ability, that model can use that ability again and can repair a model that has already been repaired that turn. That is the big, big one. Standout one for me. So, you cut that with your guy, Ferris. Ferris. You cut that with any of them. That's a potential up to eight S wounds back on a tank. I mean, a Dreadnought only has eight wounds, I believe, so... You know, the more so it can be pezzled in one turn and then just be up back to normal stats. And Iron Hands, I believe, they double their wounds, don't they, for their tanks for optimum value. I might be wrong with that one. But I believe they do. And just on the both guard on that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I read that. Um, yeah, so... Were you bothered about the Technomancy discipline? No, no. The Psychic? It's worth a read. It's worth, worth a read. Um, the mach the one that picked up I picked up on the uh, technomancy discipline was the machine flens. Uh, I'll read it off here. Machine flens is a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy vehicle unit that is within eighteen inch 
of and visible to the Psyker. That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. You can then select one other enemy unit that was within six inch of and visible to that, that vehicle unit when this power was manifested. Roll one D6 for each mortal wound that the vehicle unit suffered for each three plus the other vehicle selected vehicle suffers one mortal wound. So you you get a double double psychic power on that. Is that only against two tanks though? Yes. So I think that'll work the first time you play against an opponent that has never played against you before. Yeah. And then after that, it'll never work again. But you potentially doing six mortal wounds. Yes, spread yeah. on two tanks. No, that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. You, you can't sniff at six mortal wounds for one power. Yeah. How much does the power cost? That is a cost of uh, deliver six charge one you walk charge so easy. six. Easy. Yeah. But then again, who's going to put two tanks next to each other? That's why Steve never wins any tournaments. It's fun though. Um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, it's, um, psychic powers are not really interested in them so much at the moment, and as you might be saying from some other I'm happy about that, that means they're not overpowered. I don't really play too much psych, but, uh, with the psychic awakening that's coming, and obviously there's the Eldar stuff coming out, and I'd be interested to see if there's new flavours and put onto that psychic uh, abilities throughout all the factions. Isn't really it interested. weird that they got psychic awakening but they brought Jane Zara as the first character who isn't actually it's psychic? psychic. No. Looks cool. Mama got big hair. <laughs> Buffont. Le Buffon. <laughs> Le Buffon. So yeah, um, basically that's the, uh, we've, we've picked through the notes there and obviously uh, Andy Lee Dandy as well on the back page. I'll tell you what I like. Yeah. He's got the name generator. So I love the name generator. This is back in the Necromunda days when you used to just randomly pick a name for your, one of your guys. I used to love that. Nolcore. I don't know Scrawl. if that's filler or someone's genuinely fought for that to be in there. But either way, I really it's enjoy fun. it. I really it's really like it. It's, it's definitely fun. Doesn't the, don't the books feel nice these days? There's nice arse in the front and back and they just feel nice. I mean, for a very thin supplement, um, I think it's good. I think the, the bits of fluff are there. I think you've got some good taste of rules, stratagems, etc. The one born, and I've said it already, is I think it could have done with a bit more iron hand specific models in there. Yeah, I, I want to jump on that. It could have done with a little bit more personalization. Yeah, yeah, even maybe, I don't know, a specific unit of some sort. You know what or... they missed out? They missed out bringing a captain with a thunder hammer. Mm. I mean, we all know about the slam captains and how hard they hit. Why not just a slightly nerfed down version with a couple of rules that has a, a variety of hammer, like, like the Gorgon's hammer? That would have been awesome. Yeah, well, the, we've also seen that uh, for those who are eagle-eyed, there's the upcoming Salamanders and Imperial Fist Codex coming out. They'll be yeah, we'll do them a month a, later than we should do. Yeah, Don't we'll worry. do them two years later. Yeah, we're not going to break tradition. <laughs> but yet again, uh, from what I've seen, the consensus of that, I think there's only one model in each of them. I might be wrong, really? but I think there's only one model in each of them as well. So. Are you excited about the uh, Imperial Fist? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a secret side project that I'm working on Imperial Fists. Um, these guys like pirate heavy weapons and blowing anything up. Imperial Fists like blowing buildings. No, you like money the walls. Yeah. Oh, you man the walls. <laughs> so overall, and if you were to give this codex supplement, um, take into account the new space running codex as well, which okay. can drop some stratagems on and all that, yeah. Where would you what would you give it out of ten? So I'd have to split this into two. I'd have to give it the tournament play, nine out of ten. I think it's exceedingly good at doing one thing, and that's shooting. And any army that can do one thing exceedingly well kind of outweighs any army that does everything okay. Mm. Um, from a fun side, from a, so that's the, that's the serious side, so 9 out of 10. And from a home play about side, I think you'd be very hard pressed to have a fun game with it at home. Over the peasants. Just because you do one thing well, and if you don't take that in your army, your army, you haven't built your army very well. So I'd probably give it a four out of ten for mm. just in-house fun. 
So you've gone for four out of ten. Four out of ten in house fun and nine out of ten for tournament play. What about yourself? So I could put you on an aggregate of seven out of ten then overall. Nope. Seven point I believe five. I distinctly <laughs> put my arm down here. Ask one question, get two answers. That's what about you? Um flavoursome. Yeah, I like the flavour. Uh, I like the, the ethos behind it. Um, these guys are, you know, they're gonna hit you, they're gonna hit you hard. I like the the idea, the background, the fluff that comes with it as well. Uh, on the t I do agree with you though, I think on the table, this is reinvention of the gun line of the sit at the back. It's a towel hold. Blow your face off, literally. And, and for that alone, uh, I would give these guys probably a, an eight to a nine out of 10 on this codex. Do you Based want 8.5? 8.25. 8.5 for Steve. Can we get that on stars? 8.2 points for stars. Our editing isn't like really well. No, no. Get the crayons out. Be fine. So, 7.5 for me. 8.5 for you. Yeah. Very happy. Tell us what you think below. What you think of the, if you've got yourself an iron hand codex. Tell us what we've said here is wrong. What we've said here is right. Um, really let us know what you rate them out of 10 um, in both fun and in tournament mode and generally that's it from us have you got any more no I mean obviously what we're doing is we're trying to bring you guys more content um, viewer friendly content that's informative as well so what we hope to do is build a little community that's there so if you see anything that's in this codex that we haven't spotted or little synergies that build up Pop it in the comments. Yeah. Let everyone know because it all helps to add flavour to the game and everyone's fun and, and enjoying the experience and that's what we're here for really. So um, no, I'm I'm chuffed with that and I can't wait to get my hands on the next uh, codex supplement and have a look. Um, thanks guys, much appreciated for you taking the time to watch this. I uh, hope it's been a little bit educational for you. Uh, we still a few uh, missing blanks out for you and uh, we shall see you next time. I've been Steve. He has been Steve. I've been mostly Han. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> and this guy is dead. That's it from CQ Gaming. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you again.